you had a chance to play anything for Baba and yeah, he yeah. gave you no advance notice and he said, play, yeah, go, yeah. play, what yeah. would you play? Yeah, this play, what I would play. <laughs> My manager called, who hasn't called me for a long time because I didn't have any concerts. She calls me and uh, says, you know, uh, I think we have a concert for you, and, but there is no money. I said, what? <laughs> <You know? laughs> she said, I don't know if you want to bother doing, but there was a strange phone call from India. I don't know if you want to bother going there. Was this an invitation from Bombay or Delhi? Well, or? The, this is what this is. I, I said the exactly the same thing. I said, you know, is this a concert series in Bombay or Calcutta or some big city like that? And she said, no, I never heard this city. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, and what is this? Is it, it, well, I think it's B B Bang Bangalore or Bangalore. something. I don't know how it's pronounced, <laughs> but Bangalore, I never heard of it. And I said, I never heard of this either. And I didn't know where Baba was at that time, you know. So who is this Sai Baba who's able to do that? Well, I mean, now I'm totally convinced that he's God. Uh, he's God incarnate on the earth and uh, oh, he okay. can do anything. Okay, I'll play a little bit of ragtime for you. <laughs> <laughs> He said, uh, "Are you? Is that the real reason you're going there?" <laughs> I said, uh, "Well, I, I said, what can I lose?" You know, I said, "Well, no, really, my real reason really is I want to go see Sai Baba, Sai Baba." So Sai Baba. I knew that I was sitting on the veranda uh, performing with them uh, <laughs> for Baba these bhajan songs and so on. I you're mean, on the I veranda just, playing for Baba. Yeah, I know, I'm I was hoping you know that I get to play for Baba, <laughs> and there I was, and he was standing right in front of me for longest time, but the thing is, it was keyboard on the floor, and I was playing whole time, so I couldn't do the Pada Namaskar because I was, my feet were <laughs> moving. So, you know, if I wasn't playing, I would jump, you know, but I, I would just, oh, bye-bye. <laughs> I know it's Baba too. I'm just wild about American music. This I can is see that. Really? Well, how's it Baba too? You said it's Baba too. Yeah, you know. a Sai devotee who takes your breath away. And oh, how he loves Sai Baba. A superb musician, a man of boundless energy, a man who loves to share the lessons and the bliss of India's and the world's holy man. Masanobu Ikemia, Mas to those who know him best. Welcome to Soul Journeys. This interview was recorded in Harlem, New York City, in September of 2003. Masikemiya's story about how he came to know Sai Baba is told in words and, of course, in music.
Sairam. Sairam. <laughs> Moss, thank you very much. Thank That's you also for inviting us into your home, to have a chance to meet your wife, and to hear your story about how you came to be such a gifted musician, a world traveler, and a follower of Satya Sai Baba. I called him uh, and he came to me. And the way it worked, it was that uh, first, um, it was just the lowest point in my life. I never, you know, it, everything fell apart. And uh, I think he does this uh, to um, create this situation where I have to awaken. Um, and uh, he put me uh, in this incredibly difficult situation um, where everything fell apart. Um, I didn't have any more concerts. I didn't have any more money. My uh, wife left me with my daughter. Uh, the, the, all my friends left me or, you know, wouldn't help me. Uh, and uh, I didn't have any more really uh, reason to live. It just was just everything was uh, didn't mean anything anymore. And about how old were you at this point in your life? Well, that was, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know if I want to say my age, but. Okay, uh, you don't have to say <laughs> age. It's okay, I don't mind. I'm uh, 57, and that's, you know, that's, uh, what, uh, nine years ago, so must be, in, you know, I was, what, um, something like 40. Mm -hmm. uh, 46. Six, 40 something, 46, 40, yeah, something, 48, something mm -hmm. like that. And um, just, uh, you know, amazing thing was if until a few years later, things was okay. And then, you know, everything started going downhill and just everything just came to a incredibly, uh, you know, bottom the gutter kind of existence. And um, so I, I was so devastated and I just didn't want to go out at all. I was crying the whole time in my apartment. I just didn't know what to do with my life. and. Uh, I, I don't know why, but uh, I never did done this before. I stopped praying, and I s said, you know, God or whatever you call yourself, wh whoever out there, if you are out there, and if you have any compassion, please save me. I, I cannot go on like this. Now, did, did you do this prayer in the style in which you were raised in your native spiritual tradition? Was this no, Buddhism? No, uh, Buddhism and Christianity, mm -hmm. I was raised bo with okay. both. But um, I didn't do any, I just start shouting. I was on my knees, I didn't know what, you know. And uh, I just uh, start saying loud. And uh, of course you had no idea what the name of Sai Baba was. Right, I didn't know anything. So what happened next? Okay, now what happened was that a series of things start happening. Uh, about, uh, after I said this, somehow I felt better. I don't know why, but and then I was just sitting there, and then telephone rings. And then a friend of mine uh, says, you know what, there is an interesting meeting uh, I heard about, uh, and there's, uh, you know, what, uh, it's what kind of meeting? Uh, and, you know, I said, well, there's this man in India who does this miracle, and, uh, you know, there's a meeting about him, and uh, I don't know, you, you want to go? And I said, well, you know, well, what can I, you know, lose? Okay, I'll go, <laughs> and, you know, and <laughs> uh, and then that's two days later or something. And I said, okay, I'll you know meet him somewhere and let's go together. And then uh, I uh, and then after that I came back to the room and then I, for some reason I don't know why I turn on the television. I usually never watch television, but I turn on the television, and then I start flipping the you know channels. And um, actually, um, I got really depressed because the same old thing, the news and political intrigue and then, you know, all kinds of problems, war and, uh, you know, famine, uh, people, how everybody's each other's <laughs> throat and mm -hmm. all kinds of, and I got really depressed. I kept turning the channel, next one was a soap opera and there were jealousy and all kinds of problems. I said, oh, please give me a break. And I kept turning and then, you know, then even weather too. Well, tomorrow is sunny tonight, tomorrow, you know, today is a rainy day and this and that. So what else is new, you know? And there was nothing in this world. Everything was like, you know, turmoil, the ignorance and the uh, Maya, you know? And I just had, I said, I don't want to, you know, this life, what is the, you know, point of all this? And, uh, and then I came to this one channel, which is very strange. All of a sudden, was quiet. No more just, you know, wow, wow, wow kind of regular television program. It just very quiet, and people sitting with their hands, you know, 
together like this, and they were all, you know, and then there was this man with this uh, Afro hair uh, with the orange robe. He was going around, you know, like this, and uh, uh, I said, what is this, you know? <laughs> and, uh, but somehow I didn't understand all this, and then, uh, you know, I thought, this is strange. I never seen anything like this, and uh, no advertisement or anybody, nothing. I didn't know what it was. And then, uh, so I just shut it off. I didn't, didn't mean, and I turned off the television, and, and then, uh, you know, then a few days later, I was to go to this uh, meeting, um, and uh, on the way, in the Upper West Side, as I was walking, uh, there was this person with a uh, psychic person doing a reading, you know, and uh, I usually never, w you know, waste my time with them, but this person uh, said, come young man, you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I have some interesting something to tell you or something, and she started flipping uh, her tarot card or something. And I thought, well, you know, what can I lose? I mean, everything falling apart. Anyway, maybe she'll tell me some good news, you know, that I'm going to become rich, famous, and, uh, you know, I'm going to find a beautiful uh, wife, and, you know, everything will be great, you know. And uh, she says, she didn't say anything like that. What strange thing was that she said, you know, this is a really interesting message that, uh, uh, do you want to hear it? I said, Sure, what can I lose? She said, you know, God is with you all the time. He's in front of you, next to you, beside you, behind you, and He's in you. And do not worry. And uh, I said, well, <laughs> that's nothing. I mean, you know, that doesn't help me a bit. I mean, here I am in a mess. And uh, what, you know, so I, I just said, you know, goodbye to her. And then uh, I went to the meeting, you know, I just, mm -hmm. uh, and then at the meeting, I walk in, and there was this picture of, uh, now of course I know it's Sai Baba, it's the same picture, the man who I saw on television a couple of days ago, you know, and oh my gosh, and then you know how it is, his eyes were so alive as if he's looking at you, and he's like greeting, well, you know, I'm glad you came, and then he, he was staring at me whole time from the picture. He was so alive. And, and where was this again? This was a, uh, one of the center here, in, uh, you know, uh, and, and we what had guy in Manhattan, you, New York. But what a guy friend of mine okay. who, who was a mm -hmm. member of this, uh, uh, it, it's Central Park Center okay. in Manhattan. And uh, so uh, it was a Japanese group, you mm -hmm. know, and, uh, uh, and then uh, somehow I, I felt so at home and then all the people start talking about uh, his, their experience with Sai Baba. And um, then I, uh, you know, I, I, I just knew then that the, he was my, you know, guru. I just knew that. And then after that, I got all the books. Uh, I checked out all the books I can from the center and I started reading like crazy. As if like, you know, I was drowning and the drowning man trying to, you know, get, and I found something will save me, you know. So I started reading everything and I stayed up all night and reading about Baba. Let's and go back to your first experience for one second because I've never heard of any Sai Baba program on television. Was this a well, I, I actually, I asked everybody later, you know, uh, after I became a member of the Manhattan Center, and I asked everybody, and they said, uh, Baba had never been on the television or cable TV or anything ever in New York. So that, you know, now only thing I can see is Baba uh, appeared on television just for me, so that I could see him, you know, and I could experience him. And it was just, you know, his, his blessing. Uh, for me. So the timing was right for you. Oh, it was couldn't be any better. <laughs> and the fortune teller was right for you to sort of affirm this. Yes. And then your friend came into your life introducing you to the Sci Center at the correct time. Exactly. And even then, a lot of people have these doors open and they still don't walk through them for whatever reason. Why did you, you already said it once, but why did you feel where did you get the conviction to make this move to walk towards spiritual discovery that you didn't have before? I know there are crises in your life. I know there is a lot of pain. But do you understand what I'm saying? Many people still don't go looking for answers. You did. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, I don't know. Instinctively, I knew somehow he has an answer for me. I don't know why. 
uh, I, and I started reading everything about his uh, teaching made so much sense and it you know before I knew I needed the guidance I was lost completely I didn't know what is the right way of living I was just scrounging you know doing anything to whatever survive maybe um, you know, if I had to do something which is, uh, you know, not right, I did it anyway because that's the way everybody else is doing. And then no, you know, uh, dharma or no law, just any old way that's the way most people live, you know. And I was doing, and now I realize that uh, I needed the real uh, spiritual guidance. And somehow he, he had the answer. You know, I just somehow instinctively, unconsciously knew uh, he had the right answer because everything he wrote made so much sense mm -hmm. this is correct this is the way that we should live and everything made sense that i want to learn as much as possible about him and start studying and uh, you know doing all, all the way in i somehow like you know passionately uh, you found your soulmate you know and i just went crazy over him and just you know like how long was it after you discovered Sai Baba and started reading all the books on Sai Baba that you actually got yourself on an airplane and went to visit him? In okay, this is a really another interesting thing. At one point in the game, I was, um, you know, I kept praying to him, Baba, you know, if you are uh, my true guru, uh, please let me come see you. I really like to see you, you know, but I have no money. I don't know, any, you know, what to do. Um, and uh, at one point of the game, uh, maybe about a few months later, um, I didn't, of course, I didn't say about Baba to anybody. Uh, somebody, uh, and then all of a sudden, my manager called, who hasn't called me for a long time because I didn't have any concerts, she calls me and uh, says, you know, uh, I think we have a concert for you, and, but there is no money. I said, what? <laughs> <You know? laughs> she said, I don't know if you want to bother go doing, but there was a strange phone call from India. And, um, you know, they want you to come and play in India. I don't know how they found out about you, but they want to, you know. And uh, so, um, uh, and uh, they, they, they can't pay you hardly anything. They'll give you some rupee, but they're willing to cover all the expense, travel expense, and they'll take care of your hotel and meals and for you while you're in India. And uh, you know, if you want to go, uh, they want you to. They want me to play a concert, do two concerts, and then do some master class or something for the students there. And um, uh, it's lots of work. And going there, and you know, you, had, you might get sick, and you know, you have to take shots. And I don't know if you want to bother going there. Was well, this an invitation from Bombay or Delhi? Well, or? The, this is what this is. I, I said the exactly the same thing. I said. You know, is this a concert series in Bombay or Calcutta or some big city like that? And she said, no, I never heard this city. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, and what is this? Is it, it, well, I think it's B B Bang Bangalore or Bangalore. something. I don't know how it's pronounced, <laughs> but Bangalore, I never heard of it. And I said, I never heard of this either. And I didn't know where Baba was at that time, you know. And um, she says, but I said, I'll go. Yes, they, you know, she's, my manager said, well, I don't know why you want to go, but okay, well, I'll to send them contracts saying, uh, you know, we accept and so on. <laughs> and then, so next thing I knew it, I was on my way, flying, uh, and then uh, I arrived in Bombay. Uh, and, the, you know, when you arrive in Bombay, it, it's the middle of night, midnight mm -hmm. you arrive, and then the domestic flight doesn't leave till in the morning, 6 right? Or 6 a.m. or 8 a.m. or something. And so I was there and completely tired, you know, exhausted with jet lag and everything. And I was just sitting there, uh, you know, and then this person comes up to me, uh, you know, and then he first starts speaking to me in English, saying, uh, excuse me, uh, are you Japanese? And I said, oh, oh yes, you know, uh, and then he started talk talking to me in Japanese, and uh, then turned out to be, and then he started asking, you know, I was really tired, I really didn't want to talk much, but he said, you know, um, uh, why, you know, are you here for business? And I said, uh, yes, you know, mm -hmm. and he said, um, uh, where are you going? I said, well, I'm tired. I just didn't want to talk <laughs> to him. But he said, okay, uh, he said, I'm going to Bangalore, you know. And he said, uh, well, what are you going there for? And I said, well, he's kind of noisy, nosy, you know, but nosy. But I said, uh, well, I'm going there for business. I'm playing a concert. And he said, uh, are you, is that the real reason you're going there? 
<laughs> I said, uh, well, I, I said, what can I lose? You know, I said, well, no, really, my real reason really is I want to go see Sai Baba, Satya Sai Baba, and I really don't know where he is. I, I heard he's somewhere outside of uh, Bangalore, but I don't know where his ashram is. And he said, well, you know, you're lucky. As a matter of fact, I'm going to his ashram, and I'll take you there. And I said, oh my gosh, you know, this is wonderful, this is, thank you. But I said, you know, oh, another thing is, when I was going uh, uh, to check in, it turned out to be that I couldn't, they, somehow the, the reservation wasn't there uh, from the United States, mm -hmm. and uh, my, my, I was not on the list, domestic flight, and they were all filled up. And uh, so I said, my gosh, you know, uh, and they said they could put me on a waiting list, and the, but waiting list was something like 70 people lined up already. I said, oh my gosh, I never get on this plane, you know, 7 o'clock flight or whatever the time was. Uh, and uh, he, he, he said, <laughs> uh, I, so I told him this, you know, I don't this think This was I, an Indian man speaking in Japanese? No, 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 Japanese man. Japanese don't man, not be okay. Japanese man, but uh, you know, it was strange to find a Japanese yeah. man in the, right in the Bombay airport. Yes. But uh, anyway, he s says, well, let me, maybe I can do something. Uh, maybe, maybe I can, you know. So he goes to the counter and he comes back with tickets, <laughs> voting fast. <laughs> Did he <laughs> get one for himself also? Yeah, for himself and for me. And then, by the way, are you, you look tired. You know, I'm a member of this uh, first class uh, lounge and maybe, I'll, you know, you can rest there. He takes me there <laughs> and then you can lie down there and rest. You know, we still have a little bit of time. And here's orange juice. And I mean, he was so kind. He waited on me the whole time doing this and that. And then, you know, we flew and then to Bangalore. And then, of course, when I got there, the uh, International Music Club of Bangalore, uh, people were there with banners and, you know, the, everything. They greeted me. And then limousine and everything. They treated me like, you know, uh, uh, royalties. And uh, uh, then to, they took me to this uh, Windsor Manor Hotel, which is supposed to be one of the most exclusive, you know, fancy uh -huh. uh, hotel where Queen Elizabeth stays or something. <laughs> and they brought me to this beautiful suite room, uh, you know, suites. And then next to me was a, a, a Prince of Luxembourg was staying there with his entourage. And then, you know, I was right next to him. And he came to my concert too, you know. <laughs> it was just mind-boggling, wonderful experience. Uh -huh. And then after that, uh, you know, concert was over, um, uh, this Japanese man came again and took me to ashram. And then uh, he, you know, he, he paid for everything. I, he wouldn't let me pay for the taxi or anything. And then uh, got to the ashram, he got me, uh, checked me in, uh, you know, settled me into the room mm -hmm. and registered and everything. And he disappeared. <laughs> I couldn't find him anywhere. And I tried to, I wanted to thank him. And, you know, I was looking for him and I asked everybody and nobody knew who he was. He approached you out of the blue in the, bay, in the uh, Bombay airport. And when you said you were going to see Sai Baba, he says, I'll take you there to the ashram. Exactly. And <gasps> So who, what do you, th what do you make of that now, years later? Well, all I can th is think is the Baba sent this person <laughs> to, you know, uh, to be the uh, escort to b guide me to the ash ashram. And Mas, by now, I'm sure you've heard similar stories like that many, many times over. Yes. So yes. who is this Sai Baba who's able to do that? Well, I mean, now I'm totally convinced that he's God. Uh, he's God incarnate on the earth, and uh, he can do anything. Are you familiar with any other first-hand stories or second-hand stories that are very convincing to you um, that were real surprising, jolting, that he's been able to do similar things for other people or even for yourself? Do you have any other wonderful stories like this? <laughs> well, I have just so many, you know, uh, uh, where everything, you know, in a subtle way, or sometimes not so subtle, he lets you know that uh, everything is, he creates everything. He is a creator of this, everything in our life. Every moment of our life, he's with us, you know. One, one interesting story that uh, I was giving a concert, playing, um, uh, in in uh, with the National Symphony of El Salvador, um, mm -hmm. uh, playing Beethoven uh, Piano Concerto Number no. Four, and uh, then actually I met this uh, pe uh, side devotees from uh, El Salvador, so I contacted them. Guess what? I'm here, and maybe we, you know we'll see each other after the concert. They said, you know, they are trying to raise money for the. Uh, 
house of invalids uh, and would I do benefit concerts for them? And I said, oh, I'd love to. That's something I personally li love to do. And I know, um, you know, Baba would be happy about that too. So I, uh, they said, well, we have only five, five more days before I have to go back to New York. So quickly we mm -hmm. uh, uh, got together and started, okay, we had to get a hall and we had to do publicity and we had to let the newspaper, radio, TV, everything uh, to, so that we'd sell the tickets to raise money for this event. So they said, you know, the San Salvador, the capital, is like a maze. You know, it's just so many traffic lights and everything. And so trying to get one radio station to another t uh, newspaper, you know, uh, place or uh, the TV stations, takes you know like half an hour or one hour or more to get one place to the other and takes like about maybe four days to get through all these places and oh we never get you know anywhere with this but uh, let's try it we can all chant so as we got on the car <laughs> we were all saying Gayatri Mantra you know <laughs> say, Om, Bur, Bur, Bur. and as we're driving in Spanish and Japanese uh, and English everything yeah we're all saying any 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 language possible anything you know to get through to Baba please help us because we really want to make this success all the traffic lights are green everywhere we went. <laughs> we went through one, you know, it was like a, and then in Now that wasn't your imagination. They were green everywhere you everywhere, went. Everywhere, it was there, you know. And then in front of TV stations. And station, in San Salvador, they do not have coordinated traffic lights. No, sure they don't. <laughs> and in front of everywhere we went, like a radio station, there was this parking place right in front <laughs> waiting for us. We park there, dash in there and do the newspaper interview, dash out, go drive to the ra uh, radio station, and no, and then it, right in front, it was there, and the uh, radio station man is waiting there. You know, we went like this, and in one day, we covered the entire city, and then, you know, next day, we had practically all the tickets sold out. <laughs> I mean, it was just incredible so how everything happened so well. So you do have multiple experiences. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Tomoko is your wife, and she's a Sai Baba devotee. What does she make of all this? What did she think? Who came first to Sai Baba, you or Tomoko? I, I came first, but, <laughs> but then actually I asked for Baba, you know, please uh, find me my, you know, a lifetime partner who I can share this spiritual uh, pursuit, uh, and please send her to me, you know, and she appeared. Really, <laughs> uh, it just was miracle that she came into my life, and that she, uh, I told her about you know Baba, and immediately she just uh, was you know, open to open Sai to Baba. Baba, and uh, <laughs> and she became more fervent you know devotee than I was sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I'm not following Baba's teaching or something. Said, look, Masaru, <laughs> you know you better, <laughs> Baba is not going to be happy about this or whatever, and uh, you know. Of course, totally, we became total vegetarian right away, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, just start living his way. Moss, many people tell me they enjoy hearing Baba's stories, some people who have been close to see him, and I'd like to hear some more. And many people also say they're more interested in hearing how finding Sai Baba has helped to transform your life. How has your life been changed? You know, that's one amazing thing is that it's, I want to live as, uh, he, you know, be, before, uh, this was not my priority. Somehow the survival or my, uh, to, to, uh, my ego self to promote and, you know, uh, was sort of a main thing, you know. But now I realize this is, my, my body is just only a temple, as uh, Crystal says. It's just, and uh, it's not really important. You know, it's just uh, there as a shell. And uh, more important is uh, uh, my inner uh, divine self. Yes, but you have quite a shell. You have this talent, this God-given ability mm -hmm. to play the piano, to be a musician, to be a loving being, in addition to your spirit self inside. So a lot of people are confused about how we're supposed to be with Baba, with God, in our spirit self, going inside and staying there, and yet living day to day in the world that we're born into with our body, how do you combine the two? Or is it too difficult for you to answer because it's challenging for me to even Well, to I, I, off, you know, my talent is to be used for Baba's purpose. And I, um, I always, um, ask, you know, offer everything I, I do to him. I, before my concert, I always 
say, uh, dear Baba, I offer this concert to you. You know, bless the audience with your love and ananda and fill them with your message of love, peace, truth, righteousness, no violence. And I go on the stage and somehow he plays through me. You know, his energy goes through me and the audience, uh, I always somehow, it's a magic start happening. Uh, the audience is always filled with love and ananda, you know, with, his, uh, with the sound of music. Uh, somehow, they, you know, the sound wavelength is, has a power. It's, uh, and somehow, I feel it's oftentimes closer than verbal, uh, you know, uh, strength. So when Baba plays through me, through the, this, you know, sound vibration, Somehow it goes into the people. And what about before Baba came into your life? What about the sound wavelength then? It's, did, did never, it with the, it's never the same. Somehow before, uh, it was just my small self, you know, my ego self playing, and uh, it, had the, uh, it didn't have that love in my sound or in the music. Mm -hmm. But uh, after Baba came into my life, I offer everything to him. So I, it's not me, but Baba uh, doing, you know, the job uh, through me, just using me as an instrument. And all of a sudden, uh, everything has transformed. You know, so I never take the credit. It's always Baba who is doing this. You and know? does this transformation result in a change that's sort of static, or does it continue to grow in you? Oh, yes. It's always, uh, you know, uh, growing more and more in myself mm -hmm. and then I always try to tune into him more and more you know the one of the prayers uh, uh, dear Baba uh, let my mind and uh, you know thoughts be in tune with you all the time you know and then that's uh, how you know I'm trying to get more and more fine-tuning with him what are you going to do with the rest of your life well I, I want to get closer and closer to Baba uh, in you know, in my life, with my thoughts, words, and deeds, and uh, keep working uh, until I finally merge with him. Baba says you don't have to come to see his form. You don't have to become attached to his form. He is with us. He is with you all the time. But you went there. You were in Bangalore. I'm not sure if you went to Puttaparthi or Vrindavan, but you probably ended up seeing Baba. Tell us about that. Oh, yes. Well, you know, first time... Um, he came out. I was curious what he looked like, you know, in real person. And uh, when he, he floated out, I, he was so... Floated out? Yeah, he, he, you know, he doesn't <laughs> really walk, you know, he just <laughs> floats. And it was just so beautiful. And uh, the energy, the, uh, the in aura he, uh, he emanates, it just was so warm and powerful. It, it is actually a real energy, you know, it's nothing imagined or I felt this warmth, just my heart and ho my whole body. And, and he was so beautiful uh, that I, I, I broke down, I started crying, my tears pouring down as if I met my, you know, the true mother and father and uh, as if he's saying, where has been my son all these years, mm -hmm. you know, I, I was so kind and so loving. I, I was crying, sobbing, like a little baby, you know. Did you have much of a chance to get very close to Baba in Darshan? Oh, yes. Well, uh, you know, in Darshan, uh, I, g I had a chance to give some um, letters and so on. But on my actually first visit, on my last uh, day, as, uh, I, I think he always likes to put everything to the last minute. And my car, you know, taxi was waiting. I had all my luggage there. And then... Uh, my last uh, darshan, uh, you know, I, I was hoping I get the front line so I could say goodbye to him or something, uh, or at least say hello, you know, I, you know. But nothing. Uh, my line, the drawing, you know, you have your line yes. was the last one. <laughs> so I thought, well, I so know. you were twenty or thirty people back. From yes, yeah. And I, I actually, uh, what happened? This is what happened. Uh, that I was to. Um, you know, I had, I thought, uh, well, I'll just say goodbye, you know, from the back of the hall. And uh, as uh, everybody went in, uh, uh, by the time I was, you know, uh, going in, there was no more place for me to sit in the back, way, people were sitting way to the back of the wall. And uh, so, uh, then I was standing, I didn't know what to do. Then Sevadal uh, over there said, come over here, you know, there's a space. And then I went there, and then another Sevadal said, no, come this way. And then the minute I knew it, I was sitting in the front row. 
<laughs> now, why do you su suppose they did this? Well, this is all Baba's doing, you know? <laughs> he, he controls everything, with, uh, but he makes it look like as if it just happened by chance, <laughs> but he, it's all by him. And then I was sitting there, and then somehow I was sitting with this, uh, 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 I was sitting uh, with this Japanese group, <laughs> and uh, I was helping this Japanese group during the whole week I was there uh, translating the discourse into Japanese mm -hmm. about the discourse. So they all knew me and said, oh, and they saw me, so, oh, come join us, you know, be uh, part of us. And I sat with them, and then the whole Japanese group was invited to be uh, interview room. <laughs> So I got to go into the whole interview. <laughs> Your car's waiting for you. Yeah, in the last you minute, you know, that I thought I would never, you know, I get to see him from distance. Now I'm in interview room with him, in the, you know, right next to him. I mean, like a miracle. I was so overjoyed, you know. And then, you know, he, his message was, ex I, I fainted when he said it. He said, you know, uh, people, you people uh, worry too much, you know. You bring all, now you can bring all your problems and leave it here with me. You know, I'm with you all the time. I'm in front of you. I'm next to you. I'm behind you. And I'm in you. So do not worry. Exactly what this psychic person said. <laughs> it was just right <laughs> word by word he repeated right there. And as if, you know, of course he knew that I was, you know, so I, I was just sobbing, you know, it was just so moving. It's almost like the psychic person was Baba. Yes, yes, sending that message. You and know, he was reminding you, he was affirming you yes, with that. Yes, yes. Did you have a chance to have him talk to you directly? Did you talk to him at all? Yes, I did, but uh, it was kind of a strange situation. Um, uh, you know, I had this manuscript. Uh, the, uh, in this Japanese group, uh, there was this person who was rather kind of a strange person. He, she was... A, uh, getting this strange message from the people who died in Hiroshima mm -hmm. and uh, she was dictating and she was writing this book uh, what the other per these people were saying from the other side of the world or something and she wanted me to translate that into English and publish it in the United States and um, I wasn't sure if I should do this because it's really not Baba's message mm -hmm. and I was not convinced so I had this manuscript and I said to Baba may I translate you know, and he said, what is it? You know, <laughs> and all of a sudden, what is, what is the title? And uh, I, all of a sudden I froze. I couldn't remember the title of this thing. And I said, um, I, I don't remember. And everybody started laughing. And he said, he said, just give it to me. And he took it away. And uh, really, and he never returned it. So that was like a message that don't bother doing this kind of thing, you know. And uh, <laughs> it was so sweet, like, a, you know, mother saying, you know, don't waste your time with this, you know, and he took it away. Uh, did you ever get blessed with any other close encounters with Baba? Uh, well, you know, I had... Um, you made several trips there. Right, right. Well, I was, you know, in a group, of course, I had, the, you know, Padanamaska and other things like that. It was just... Uh, Wonderful, you know, and I, I at one point <laughs> uh, I was sitting uh, at one of the birthday uh, celebration. I was sitting in the canteen. I, I, I got there just a few days ago and I didn't know anybody and I usually don't like to talk to anybody when I eat. So I was just quietly eating by myself and nobody was talking and I wasn't talking to anybody. And all of a sudden this person sits, you know, sits to me next to me and he says, you know anybody who plays piano? <laughs> uh, we need somebody to play in, in our ensemble uh, to play for Baba. Yeah, and I uh, know somebody <laughs> who does. Oh my gosh! And I, 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 yeah. As a matter of fact, I, you know, play piano. Uh, I don't know. Is there, you know, uh, is there anything I can do? Maybe. And she said, Yes. You know, we need ready, and we have music, and maybe we are rehearsing this afternoon. Uh, can you come? I said, Of course. Yes, I'll be there. <laughs> so I got there, and we, you know, start rehearsing, and then, so minute I knew it, I was sitting on the veranda, uh, performing with them uh, <laughs> for Baba, these bhajan songs and so on. I You're mean, on the just, veranda playing for Baba. Yeah, I know it was a miracle, just a miracle. I just because I was hoping, you know. I get to play for Baba, and uh, there I was, and he was standing right in front of me for longest time. But the thing is, it was keyboard on the floor, and I was playing whole time, so I couldn't do the Pada Namaskar because I was my fingers were <laughs> moving. So you know, if I wasn't playing, I would jump, you know. But yeah. I, I was just, oh, Baba! <laughs> do you remember what you were playing? 
Well, one of the buttons, several buttons, you know. Uh, you couldn't do something right now. Uh, do, you, do you have any idea what it was? Uh, no, I don't remember, okay. uh, but I don't know. I don't know, I can't remember, but... That's pretty uh, but good. Something like <laughs> but then we had the other people, you know. So then when the concert was over, when your hands were finally taken off the keyboard, which was on the floor, you were sitting on the floor, uh, did Baba smile? Did he say thanks to the group? Uh, how did he acknowledge his delight in what you all were doing? Well, he was, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, he just basically blessed all of us and good, you know, happy, happy or something like that. And he blessed mm -hmm. all of us, you know. Was such and a wonderful And how feeling. many trips have you been able to make there so far? Uh, I think uh, we've been there about 10 times. That's a lot of yeah, times. Yeah. And do you have any plans, the two of you, to ever go back in the future? We'd like to, you know, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, right now, somehow, Baba is, we haven't been there about three years now, but mm -hmm. Baba is telling us uh, that the, it's f it don't get attached to his form. That's what and I was it's going not to ask. necessary to come to India, you know, mm -hmm. try to find uh, Baba in our hearts. Uh, and so that's what I, I'm, you know, we're trying to do right now, try to tune in to him and try to follow his message within our hearts. We have time for one more question before we have a little piano signature at the end of this. But instead of me asking the question, ask yourself, if you will, Maz, what one point have we not touched on that you would like to comment about Baba? Is there anything in particular that's really impressed you, that's struck you, that's changed your heart about Baba? Well, there's so many, so many things I, you Just know. Just pick one. Oh, okay. Um, one is that uh, we, you know, He's always blessing us, like sun is always uh, shining on us, but uh, we need to open our hearts. And uh, like if we have all the, you know, windows and everything closed uh, in our house, uh, when sun is out, you know, it will be dark inside. But um, if we go out, there he is. And same thing, we open our hearts and our mind and really see that what a beautiful thing he's doing, what a, you know, incredible love he's pouring on us um, to receive his love. Um, you know, then we, we can. Uh, and uh, we just need to do that, be open more and more and be aware. Because I, I start to see that when I see everything is he's doing, and uh, you know everything is a sign of his, you know what? Uh, huh? Bliss. Yeah. Lilas. Huh? A part of his will, his lilas. That's right. That's right. I, I wanted to ask you. Uh, certainly, I've seen a change in you from what I've heard from talking to people like Hal Honig, who have known you for many years, and and your wife and you are both followers of Sai Baba. What about the other people in your life? Not that they may have become familiar with Sai Baba, but have they noticed a change in you? Perhaps family members, friends, longtime professional associates. Have they seen a change in you since you've become? Oh yes, they they um, you know very very um, impressed and very happy about my change. Mm -hmm. um, my parents, of course, and uh, many of my people, uh, f uh, friends, and. Um, uh, I, I run a music festival in Maine in the summertime called Arcadie Music Festival. And uh, if uh, I notice that when I change, people change. I, you know, I, I learn hard ways that I never try to, you know, uh, persuade others to um, become Baba devotee because it's, uh, it has to be at the right time. They have to be ready and only Baba could do this. Uh, he knows when the right time to uh, call them to him, and uh, only he could call them to be, you know, their devotee, uh, his devotee. Uh, and uh, so I really don't uh, try to promote Baba. So, Mas, it seems like for you anyway, right now is the right time. Yes. And we want to thank you very much for these wonderful stories and comments. Sairam to you, and I understand now that we've heard the world famous Mas play some of the budget music and the concert classical music, you're going to treat us with something a little different as we say Sairam. Oh, okay, I'll play a little bit of rock time for you. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
something like that. Sai Ram, <laughs> Sai Ram. Yeah, you know, also there are, I mean, uh, El Salvador's story continues, you know, yeah. actually, I can tell I you more. Uh, you know, afterwards... Oh, well. Hold on, I, I want to be able to try to catch this story too. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, well, that's an interesting story too, yeah. I'm Okay. And where did you get this camera from? Uh, this, uh, piano? This, this piano from? Oh, this is really magic. Uh, actually, I, you know, this is... Really, uh, Play anything for us as you yeah. talk about Baba too, you said it's Baba too. Yeah. You know, you know. to play anything for Baba and yeah, he yeah. gave you no advance notice and he said play, yeah, go, yeah. play. Yeah. What would you play? Yeah, this is probably what I would like. <laughs> Tune somehow for me. You Why know, is it a It's a very strange, but you know, he loves ragtime. I know it. I, I never <laughs> played this for him, but you know, uh, every time at the concert, why he I loves play this. Ragtime. Yeah, 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 I don't know, but uh, every time I play this, uh, you know, the entertainer, the whole audience just go crazy. They yeah. just love this music, and then, you know, sometimes, you know, I'm uh, like, if he wants to, you know, let me know that he's there, he. Uh, you know, I'm walking down the street or somewhere, and I'm just kind of down. All of a sudden, this, uh, you know, the ice cream, uh, you know, uh, the truck or something. You know, they'll be playing this. <laughs> you know, last time, we, after our wedding, we were in this uh, hotel, uh, you know, having a reception with our friends. And uh, this harpist, we were in the lounge playing. <laughs> So it is your signature Baba song. Yeah, I think so because you know it's just such a sweet blessing. You know he yeah. does this to me, and the most unexpected place. You know, yeah. and it's such a happy. And sound. you said he has more to say about El Salvador. What oh, do you yes. mean by that? Oh yeah, Masada, why don't you? Well, yeah, about uh, your brain. Uh, no volcano. Yeah, no, no, but a, a brain, a brain tumor person. That Go ahead. In, in you should say that first. Go ahead. You say it first. Yeah, no, 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 you should no, say no, that first. No, please, no, no. please, what's on the way? No, no, you. Well, well, that's what the whole interview. No. He, he wants you to speak. <laughs> I'll get her the next yeah. time. Okay, okay. I, I think we're being a little unfair well, and ganging up on it. Yeah, we could sit. Yeah, uh, well, it doesn't matter. Uh, um, we you know, sit. about this El Salvador yeah. thing. <laughs> you know. Uh, okay, the story continues. You know. Uh, okay, after the concert, right? Yeah. Uh, they wanted to, you know, uh, treat us to go see the. Uh, oh, yeah. No, one, before I forget about this, <laughs> is that when I landed in uh, in South San Salvador, uh, it was right after the civil war. They used to have lots of, you know, contracts oh, yes, and all kinds of problems. For you. And uh, when I landed in San Salvador, the whole town was demolished. You know, mm -hmm. this bomb mm -hmm. everywhere, and um, I, I was really scared. So I said in myself, you know, gosh, Baba, I mean, I'm scared, you know, I hope uh, you said you're with me all the time. Are, are you sure you're with me, you know? <laughs> and then the car comes to a stop sign or the traffic light mm -hmm. and the car stops. And then uh, I looked to the right, you know, I was scared and I saw this whole building demolished by bomb. I thought, oh my gosh, I was so scared. And then... <laughs> I start finding this one letter which, you know, came from the restaurant or something and like a barbecue or something, B, you know, I found B first, okay? And then I found A, another A, which was like lying on the side, 
you know, and then I found another B. Just individual letters. Individual letter, letter, letter from the uh, restaurant sign or something, you know. And uh, you found B-A-B-A. B-A-B-A, that's what it is. <laughs> and I started laughing. At the beginning, I didn't know. I was just staring at it and I found B and A, B, A, my gosh, and I started laughing. <laughs> You know, that was right after I said in myself, are you with me, Baba? And <laughs> Baba, right there in front of me. I start cracking up. It I, sounds I like just, you've got many, many Leelas, many, many miracle oh, stories in your life. Yeah, another th story is this volcano yeah. story. You know, uh, after the concert, successful concert of this raise the money, you know, for this Sai um, Invalid uh, mm -hmm. Center, uh, they wanted to show me this beautiful volcano which is supposed to be a very famous place. And as we went there, sure enough, Baba always does this, was completely foggy. We couldn't see anything. And they were saying, oh, I'm sorry, it's just, this is such a gorgeous place, but with this fog, there's no way you can see this beautiful volcano. We feel sorry. And, you know, we were at this uh, top of the mountain looking over to this volcano. And uh, they were saying, well, it's out there, but, you know, there's no way we can see this. And uh, all the devotees said, you know, we should pray to Baba. Maybe he will let <laughs> us see the volcano. So we all start chanting like crazy, um, you know, and please, you know, uh, and then, you know, but uh, nothing happened. It got even worse. It got more foggy and we couldn't see even a few feet away. It was so dark. And, uh, you know, so we were ready to give up. And as we were walking to the car, all of a sudden, one of the devotees said, you know, Baba said at 12 o'clock he'll show us the volcano. <laughs> well, how did, that, how did that person know that? I don't know how, I, I, but uh, you know, it was 5 till 12. <laughs> so, so, yeah, he got the message. So we walked back and sure enough at 12 o'clock, this was just incredible. From this dark, completely covered up cloud, there was this opening in the, in the cloud as if and the theater, you, this is so, such light kind of thing, was opening. It was getting brighter and brighter. And then, uh, as if the curtain was drawn, uh, the, it, the mist cleared more and more. And it happened within one minute, didn't it? So quickly. And my wife took a picture of before picture and after picture. <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden, in one minute, all the curtain opened, mist cleared away, and this beautiful magnificent uh, volcano was uh, in front of us and it was only a few seconds yeah, right oh, we all oh. shouted with joy and oh thank you baba it's so beautiful by this is miracle <laughs> and then minute we knew it, it was covered up it just a curtain came back and then mist everywhere and we could not see well anything. we're going to have to come to japan and get more Leela stories from we both of you. We should hang out with you. <laughs> yeah, uh, we should just That's hang out with you yeah. to experience these things. Well, there's another, all, all kinds of stories. All right, there's another, them. think of one more. Okay, one more. more. Well, okay, now the... Um, um, Next time. She, <laughs> she, she, Would she, you feel, do you feel like telling about your story? About yeah. the, you know, about no, the hot water. No, I, I, I'm, hot water. I'm not a good at this. But you could host right. I'll hot tell you what, we'll let you off the hook this time, but the next time we come, You'll have to think about a couple of stories okay. to tell us. All right? Yeah. Okay. Great. Your story sounds interesting. Yeah, well, my, uh, the one more quick last story oh, is yeah. the uh, Jasmine story. Jasmine, okay. oh, we you love know, As you know, that uh, the Baba's, uh, in a, but uh, when he comes out, Darshan, mm -hmm. many people smell his uh, Jasmine. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know how he does it, but minute, especially in Kodai Canal where we were, um, uh. he comes out, Instantly, you smell this yeah. jasmine. I mean, there's no way anybody could, you know, with this huge fan, you know, machine or something exactly. to try to. Do. He minute we see him, you smell the oh, jasmine. What a I don't know how he does. Wonderful that. miracle, right? But anyway, that so that uh, we associate this jasmine smell with Baba, and then I went back to Japan and continued my concert, and then at. Uh, you know, whenever, before the concert, sometimes he, I smell Jasmine, like uh, he's with oh. me, you know, he's blessing me, oh. and I think, thank you, Baba, you know, sometimes I pray before the, go on the stage, I say, you know, dear Baba, bless the audience with your love and ananda, and, you know, uh, fill them with your message of love, peace, truth, righteousness, non-violence, and give me strength and, you know, inspiration to play at my best, and so on. Uh, and then I go on the stage, and at one of the plays, I, um, 
I finished playing and at the end of the concert this fan, uh, this person from the back of the stage was trying to bring me a flower and she dashed to the you know, stage and give, gave me the flower uh, and guess what the flower was? Oh. Jasmine. Jasmine. Uh, you know, in Japan, oh. it's too cold. Rare. There's no jasmine flower yeah. in Japan. And oh. then I went to uh, oh. another, you know, ro uh, hotel, checked in. Uh, I did, they asked me to do a dinner show, and I was at this beautiful hotel in Kyoto. And uh, they took me to this room where I was to, uh, you know, rest. And uh, th these fancy hotels have r names in the rooms, you know, and uh, they happen to be like these rooms have like a chrysanthemum room, cherry blossom room, and so on. Guess what my room was? <laughs> the jazz <Jasmine> room. room. <laughs> I mean, you know, these, uh, you, can't, you can't call this coincidence. I no, mean, you know, it's the, not. The, the, over and over again. Well, this seals it. We have to get on a plane and come to Japan because yeah. I'd like to hear your stories from there <laughs> or here to New York. Yeah. Or uh, oh, Bar Harbor, uh, Oh yes, Maine. please do come to my yeah. music festival in Maine, Arcady. What, what, what are the dates roughly every year? Okay, every uh, start Arcady Music I Festival starts in the middle weekend. of Ju middle of Ju July uh -huh. to the end of August. It's every summer in uh, Maine, Bar Harbor, Maine. But uh, we do concerts. And you're the uh, music way. director yeah. of that yeah. program, yeah, it's correct? Called is this Arcady, really? okay. Arcady it's Music it's Festival. Fun. You can yeah. keep it. And you know this Arcady Music Festival. And I'm the founder and I'm the artistic director. So that's the, where you are every summer. You're mm -hmm. here, uh, you go to uh, Japan for every fall. Right. And then you spend the winter months here in uh, New, New York, York City. Yes. And then you have made 10 trips to India. Yes. And Tokomo here has, uh, I think, pictures of the a volcano. Okay, okay, the before, the after. Show us the before. Okay, before. What is before, Tomoko? I don't know, but it's okay. Very, oh, it's, it's a very you could hardly see how you know foggy it is. Oh, this is this is showing up very well. You yeah, can see yeah, it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And then uh, this this is the, you know when he finally were able to see oh, the volcano. Just, you know. oh, oh, this is right here. Yeah. Oh, this is before. Right. This this is is you couldn't order. see anything. You couldn't see anything. It's same see, shot, same same, shot, same oh. location. And then this is you know when he opened up and we could see the volcano. And down here too. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I've You're got, very spoiled. I've got, I've got four minutes left. I want to use them wisely. Okay. I'd like to invite you to think about sitting down at the keyboard. Okay, okay. And not play anything you want. And if you feel a story coming on, talk over the music about Baba. We're going to make sure that lots of people have a chance to receive this videotape for free because it's oh so my beautiful. Gosh. But since we've got four minutes left, Baba says, just go ahead, I'm sure, and play any music you want. And if you feel like sharing a story, just talk over your music, okay? Uh -huh. It can be classical, it can be budgeons. Right, right, right. right. So I take don't... it away, Mike. <laughs> I don't know, I haven't uh, thought about it. Uh, but uh, You don't have to think about oh, it. Oh, okay, okay. You know, sometimes I make a really a wonderful uh, caricature of this uh, classical uh, piece, you know, for it is. One sample of something else that's classical that lifts your heart. Oh, well. I, I, I knew. What? I knew. Oh, I yeah, well, this is a, a ride that she might wife like this, uh, Livestrom. <laughs>
Respecting and abiding by 